Hello. Welcome to this service of spiritual communion on Sunday the 19th of April. Good to see you here. Now I have been quite clever in putting words up recently with this particular programme and it's worked beautifully but I've just spent the last two hours trying to do that today and it won't do it even though I've done the same things that I've done many times before so the words won't be on the screen um, today just uh, just me speaking but you should have the order of service which was inside the new sheet um, on the email where you would have found the link for this video so let's start let's start to give God our worship Alleluia Christ is risen he is risen indeed Alleluia the Lord is here his spirit is with us. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred. Open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God our Father. Amen. After you've been through this service, do pick up the Bible and read Psalm 16 in its entirety. I've just chosen a solitary verse. But it's a very encouraging psalm to read. So verse 10 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's traditional in the weeks following Easter, so that's the Easter season, to have readings from the book of Acts. So our reading today um, is chapter two um, with verse 14 and verses 22 to 32. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the de um, definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucify and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, and so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. But you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. And our Gospel reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. So my thoughts about our readings today. Our gospel reading that we just heard is obviously that famous passage, Doubting Thomas. And Thomas is a character I think we can all sympathise with a little bit. He's the one who was brave enough to say that he didn't believe that Jesus had risen until he had seen it with his own eyes. And we're all like that sometimes. And we meet people like it all the time. People who say, if there's a God, prove it. Of course, Jesus appearing in the flesh to Thomas was proof enough for Thomas. And we have our faith based on our own experiences with how God has worked in our lives or shown himself to us. And that's our proof. And Jesus said that we're blessed for it. But there's another message in our readings, in both the Gospel and in Acts. As you probably know, Acts was written by the writer of Luke's Gospel and is an extension of that Gospel, almost a Luke book two. And at the start of Acts reading for today, it says, but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. And in the reading from John, it starts, it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Last week, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Day. Now, I know this year was a bit different, but it is a joyous day, Easter Day, the most joyful day of the church's calendar. It is the proof and justification for our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, it was gives us, gives us hope, that proof in the risen Christ. But for those first Christians, those first apostles and disciples of Christ, that first Easter day wasn't amazingly joyful. Yes, they had heard and they had seen that Christ was indeed risen. Alleluia. But from our readings, we get the feeling that they weren't out on the streets yelling about it or shouting it from the rooftops. Instead, they were all clustered together in a locked room. Perhaps having conversations in hushed whispers because they were frightened of being labelled a follower of Jesus Christ in case they too were arrested and killed. A perfectly normal reaction. And so everything which comes after that, that we hear about the ministry of the apostles and disciples as laid out in the book of Acts, 
against that backdrop of fear. What those first Christians managed to do was really quite extraordinary. And for us, well, I think we're living with a backdrop of fear right now. We're fearful of catching the virus. We are fearful that those we love might catch it. We're fearful of life not returning to normal for a long time. We're fearful of what the future holds for ourselves and our communities and our country and the world. And I don't think this backdrop of fear will dissipate for quite some time now, do you? So how can the story of doubting Thomas help us? Well, firstly, we have proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ through our own witness of how God works today. And this gives us the peace which Christ expects us to have. John's reading says that Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. If we recognise that Jesus is standing with us, individually and collectively, then we can have that peace too. Not in a zoned out, chilled out sort of way, but in the knowledge that he's got all our bases covered, that he's our rock. He doesn't waver and he won't waver for eternity. Lastly, John said that Jesus breathed on the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. And this, this is John's version of Pentecost. And it tells us that we have God's power with us. We have the Holy Spirit with us who can do all things and will do all things. The Holy Spirit is often known as the Comforter, and I'm sure that I've already told you that the old fashioned interpretation of the word com to comfort means to strengthen. So the Holy Spirit is always with us in power to strengthen us in our faith so that we can do all things for God. We may have a backdrop of fear now, but we can live in peace with proof of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we can do all things in his power. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are always with us, that you are always giving us strength, that you're always giving us peace. We pray for our world. We pray for the leaders of nations that the decisions they make will be just and righteous. We pray for our communities and we thank you for the expressions of love that we've witnessed in those communities. Help us, Lord, to know where we can help or what we can do, whether it's very practical or whether it's prayer. We pray for those who are poorly, people who need your healing hand. We ask you to be beside them, strengthening them. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. 
Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers and keep us all in your care. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Well, I hope you have a great day in the peace of Christ. I'm on leave for this coming week and Reverend Andrew will be doing all the recordings and sending those out. Um, on 6 p.m. on Sunday the 19th, um, there'll be a Zoom Evensong. So please tune in to that if you can. The link will be coming around on an email or if it hasn't already done so. Um, so do give that a go. It'll be a little um, more meditative perhaps than, than last week's service. Not quite so righteous, but uh, still it's good to get together to worship God. So bless you and stay safe. God bless.